All right. So in this video, we are going to write the code for the amicable pair problem. Let's start. So I'm going to begin by first creating a class. I usually start out with a gibberish name and I delete the entire code. And I start by importing the scanner class, java.udu.scanner. Right? Next, I'm going to name the class amicable pair. That's, that's a good name, amicable pair. That makes sense. Now, remember the subtasks that I identified while solving the problem. The first subtask was to uh, find out the sum of proper divisors of a number. Proper divisors of a number. All right. And the second subtask was to check whether two numbers form an amicable pair. Check if two numbers form an amicable pair. Let's begin with the first subtask. So, uh, as you know, the proper divisors of a number are the factors of a number excluding itself. And from the observation that we saw in the previous video, we know that for the number n, the uh, proper uh, the factors excluding itself or the proper divisors lie between 1 to n by 2. So, let's first write the name of our function. That's sum of divisors, it takes a number as input, moreover as the proper divisors lie, and moreover I'm going to need a variable here first, a sum and I'm going to initialize with 0. Now the proper divisors of a number n lies between 1 to n by 2, therefore I'm going to run a loop that's going to go from 1 to n by 2. And n in this case is num i plus plus. All right. Now I have to check whether i is a factor of num. So if num mod i equals 0, if that is the case, then I'm going to add this factor to sum. Sum equal to sum plus i. And if it isn't, the loop is going to continue anyways. Moreover, after finishing this loop, uh, the uh, proper divisors, the sum of the proper divisors of num would be stored in this variable, which uh, happens to be our result. And that's what we're going to return from our function. Now the first subtask is complete, let's move on to the second subtask. So uh, in this method, we have to check whether uh, the two numbers passed into the method form an amicable pair or not, and we're going to take help of sum of divisors. So because we are checking, therefore the return type is going to be boolean. So check amicable, and it's going to take in two numbers as input, int num1, comma int num2, right? Now, if you remember the algorithm from the previous video, or if you have it written down in your copy, that's very good. You want to see, I'm going to follow that line by line. So, in fact, uh, in fact, the algorithm has been clearly mentioned in the uh, question as well. You just need to find out how to convert that to into the Java program syntax. All right. So, the sum, or we are checking if the sum of divisors, the first number is equal to the second number. And, and I like to put a bracket here just for, uh, just for me, so it helps me understand the conditions better and improves readability as well. Because you must know that um, a code is more often read by other programmers than it is run. So uh, the a nice format indentations do matter and I want you all to follow these conventions. All right. And next. We're going to check if the sum of divisors of the second number is equal to the first number. If that, if that is the case, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Right? So we're done with the second subtask as well. Now, time for the main method. So public static void main string out. Now the first step is to create an object of the scanner class. So scanner I see to the new scanner system dot in. Oh, Mr. Well, 
because we are calling the check amicable function, which is a member method in our class. Therefore, we need to create an object of our class as well. And the name of our class is amicable pair. So amicable pair, if you, uh, if, if you sometimes, if you get confused on how to create an object of a class, you, sorry, you can always take the exam help of this line. Because you say, uh, because uh, this line, I hope it's ingrained in your mind because this is the line that you have to write for taking an input. And you can take uh, the example of this to create an object of this class. For example, scanner happens to be the name of the class, right? So what is the name of our class? That's amicable pet. So amicable pet. SC is the name of the object. We can name our object ODJ, short for object. And uh, then new, and then again the class name. So our class name is amicable pet. And the brackets are going to be empty. That's how it is, that's how easy it is to relate them, right? Next, we're going to take two numbers as input from the user. So system dot out dot print. Enter the first number. Print number one, which is a C dot next. And and we're going to need a second number as well. So I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. Change first to second and one to two. All right, so, so the input part's done. Now it is time to check whether these two form an amicable pair or not. So we're going to call the check amicable method by uh, taking the help of the object of this class. So obj dot check amicable. I'm just going to copy the name from here and pass in the two methods, pass in the two numbers. I'm really sorry. Now, if this function turns true, then we are going to display that these two form an amicable pair, else they don't. So uh, I'm going to compare it with true. But you see one thing, uh, if the condition, if the condition inside of if becomes true, if block is automatically executed. And uh, this function returns true, right? There's no point checking true with true and true or false with true. Because it's a boolean anyways, so we can skip this. Right and straight away, right? System dot out dot print Ellen. Okay, so I'm going to present it in a beautiful manner. So I'm going to write it in a neat way. So num one plus comma plus num two plus bracket forms an amicable pair. Else, they don't. I'm going to copy this line, paste it over here. Does not form an amicable pair. Okay. Let's compile this. Hope it compiles. Yay, it does. But in any case, if your code does not compile, there's no need to be disheartened. Read what is given here and the uh, respective line will be highlighted in red and go to where the red squiggly line appears. For example, let me demonstrate. Let's say you forgot a terminator over here. So press on compile. And in this line, this particular section will be highlighted in red. And in which portion your error is will be highlighted in red squiggly lines. I hope it's visible on the screen. And if you bring your mouse cursor here, it's going to tell you exactly what's missing. So terminator expected, right? But sometimes uh, the compiler, you see the compiler is a program after all that translates your uh, source code into Java byte code. So if you happen to miss the operator over here and you press compile, the error that you get could be this, bracket expected, not a statement, terminator expected. So the compiler is a little dumb in some ways, it's a little dumb. So uh, you, would un you would understand that these two are operands and there has to be an operator between two operands. It cannot be simply separated by a space. And you know that we are, as we are running a loop from one to num by two, so the operator must be this. Now, because I made the error in the first place, it was easier for me to figure it out. It may not be for in your part, but still, I hope you will be able to figure it out. And if you don't, you just copy the error or write down the error in Google, there will be a stack overflow post on that error. There, ha there has to be someone else 
who there has to be someone who has had this error before you and someone might have given an answer right to go through stack overflows and don't be disheartened if your code doesn't compile in the first run all right let's run this probe okay so let's give the first number as 220 and the next number as 284 they form an amicable pair oh if i give a space here it's going to look a little nice right so i'm going to do that now it's completely cosmetic there is no logical changes that i have done but i want my output to look good all right so let's try with the last number 66928 66992 all right let's run this and okay so 66928 66992 well the form an amicable pair as well let's try this with some other random number which i hope is not an amicable pair so a one two three and three two one. Yeah, they're not an amicable pair. So I hope you understood uh, the quote from this video. But uh, it's best if you watch the first video because there I explained uh, the algorithm and how I'm going about solving this. And if you got stuck, you can take help of this solution. All right. See you in the next one. Bye for now.